What if I told you that just two years ago, the world's top semiconductor historian Chris Miller, author of Chip War, told AIM, India may never be able to catch up in chip manufacturing. Its best chance is to stay a design hub. Fast forward to today. That narrative is dead. Because here at Semicon India 2025, Prime Minister Narendra Modi stood before the world and declared after his recent visit from China and Japan. This is what he said. Of course, our journey began late, but nothing can stop us now. The world trusts India. The world believes in India. And the world is ready to build the semiconductor future with India. In his keynote, Modi compared chips to digital diamonds. This is what he said. Oil powered the last century, but the power of the 21st century lies in a small chip, one that can accelerate the development of the entire world. He reminded the audience that in just four years, since the launch of the India Semiconductor Mission, India has gone from vision to fabs under construction. And the proof was in his hands. Union IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav presented him with the Vikram 32-bit processor and test chips of the recently approved projects and universities. So if you remember, we at Front Page covered the Vikram and Kalpana chip story extensively. If you haven't watched that breakdown yet, well, please do check it out after tonight's Front Page. Back to PM Modi who, of course, tied India's semiconductor rise to three factors. The PLI schemes that unlocked over 1.6 lakh crore rupees in investments. A talent pool of 20% of the world's semiconductor design engineers trained across 278 universities with centralized EDA tools and, most importantly, the trust of the global ecosystem. The less there is paperwork, the more there will be wafer work, Modi said, signaling that speed is India's biggest advantage. This wasn't just policy theatre. It was India's silicon moment. The world's top semiconductor CEOs lined up to echo that belief. Mr. Ajit Manocha of SEMI said this, India's growth is exponential and unprecedented. Christoph Fokwe, ASML, had this to say. Today, semiconductors are everywhere. Tomorrow, AI will be everywhere. Tim Archer of LAM Research announced their Semiverse platform training 60,000 Indian engineers. Kai Beckman, Merck, ended up with this, highlighted the complexity of fabs needing 500 plus chemicals at 99.999% purity. Prabhu Raja of Applied Materials had this to say, make in India must become invent in India. Well said, sir. Mark Papermaster of AMD, he confirmed their $400 million India R&D investment is on track. Sriram Vishwanathan, Celesta Capital, announced the India Deep Tech Alliance, $1 billion plus dollars in capital. Clearly, these weren't symbolic statements. They were actually market commitments. Right now, Taiwan makes 99% of AI accelerators. One supply shock is equal to global chaos. India's pitch at Semicon was very, very clear. We are the world's insurance policy and soon a semiconductor powerhouse in our own right. With fabs in Gujarat, packaging hubs in Assam, photonics breakthroughs at IIT Madras and ISRO 
rolling out indigenous chips like Kalpana and Vikram, the pieces of the puzzle are beautifully falling into place. As PM Modi put it, the day is not far when the smallest chip made in India will drive the biggest change in the world. And for a ground level view, our tech journalist Sanjana Gupta is reporting live from Semicon India 2025. And here is what she had to say. Hello everyone, uh, this is Sanjana reporting live from Semicon India 2025 happening here in uh, Delhi. Uh, I must say the energy here is amazing. From the starting uh, keynote sessions uh, by PM Modi, Ashwini Vaishnav, Delhi CM, to even the other keynote speeches by uh, leading, uh, you know, industry CEOs like those from uh, ASML, uh, Tokyo Electron, uh, Applied Materials, and more. Uh, they've all expressed uh, immense interest in investing in India, being a part of the India uh, Semiconductor Mission, being part of the journey, and. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been very enthusiastic uh, up until now, and the event has catered to so many different uh, sectors of the industry, be it the startups, be it the government initiatives, uh, uh, or even uh, like VC firms, for example. So uh, I'd say there's been a lot of participation. I think another focus has been uh, participation by state governments, um, especially by the Odisha government and uh, UP governments. Uh, the states that have been focusing on, you know, India's upcoming semiconductor plans. So uh, the participation has been amazing. And I think the importance of this participation was also stressed upon by uh, Ajit Manocha uh, from uh, Semi uh, in one of my sidelines conversations with him. He mentioned how important it is for all these states to have a healthy competition going forward, which was also iterated by PM Modi in his speech. So I think... Uh, from there, uh, the participation has been great. Uh, I was able to catch off uh, Odisha CM as well uh, during one of his inauguration of the uh, Odisha P, uh, Pavilion uh, in the exhibition and uh, his conversations with the uh, people from uh, upcoming semiconductor plants uh, in the state. So that has been great. I was also able to catch uh, Sriram Vishwanathan, uh, the founding partner at Celeste Capital, and he did uh, you know uh, mention a lot about uh, the VC ecosystem in India, the requirement of capital, and more? I think that's been like a journey that India is uh, looking forward to, and you know, hoping to take off a lot from there. Uh, additionally, uh, I was able to have a short interaction with Minister Ashwini Vaishnav as well, where he uh, explained more on like the. Uh, um, uh, ISRO chip and you know getting into details of the chips uh, developed by uh, the students that uh, we have mentioned before so uh, I think overall the energy is uh, really great here and hoping to get more from this event now for your insightful coverage and we are sure that you will have a great time covering Semicon India for the next two days and as far as our audience is concerned we promise to bring you more exclusive and impactful information. So, from being written off in chip war as too late to the party, India is now the surprise protagonist in the global chip race. This isn't just about silicon. It's about sovereignty. It's about saying that when the chips are down, the world can bet on India. Again, these are PM Modi's words. And India is accelerating, inching closer towards leading the global $1 trillion semiconductor market. India is estimated to touch $110 billion by 2030. At the pace we are going, there is no doubt. Let us know what you think in the comments below and how proud this development makes you feel. Please keep them long because we would love to read them all.